Okay, so, hello and welcome to British Victims of Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, this is the New Light podcast and we're looking at baptisms in 2021. How are they different? Now, I just want to quickly say that just because we're called British Victims of Jehovah's Witnesses doesn't necessarily mean that we kind of feel like everybody is a victim of Jehovah's Witnesses who have been through the religion. We actually prefer to use the term survivor, but victim is a more attention grabbing, uh, a more attention grabbing title because technically they are victims. But we tend to think of former Jehovah's Witnesses who have made it out despite the religion as survivors, and um, they could be survivors of uh, multiple abuse, not just the abuse of being indoctrinated into a cult, but also um, serious abuse as well. Well, if cult isn't serious enough, but you know what I mean. So with all that out of the way, what we're going to discuss now is, sorry, I'm playing with the can right near the microphone, playing with a a, a juice monster energy drink right near the microphone. It's probably distracting. Um, What we're going to discuss is this point about the baptisms in 2021, and I briefly mentioned it on the end of the previous video. Did you know that in 2021 people were baptized as they have been in other years of course men and women individuals were baptized in 2021 and in some cases some of those individuals and i know one of them not very well terribly well but i know of one of them at least they have never been to a kingdom hall and they've never knocked on someone's door Now, why am I bringing this up? What's so interesting about that? Okay, so what? People were baptised in 2021 who happened to have never been to a Kingdom Hall and happened to never have knocked on a door. Well, in order to have a snowball's chance in hell of being baptised throughout the history of Watchtower, you had to do at least those two things. You had to go to the meetings at at the Kingdom Hall, not in the comfort of your own home on Zoom, (laughs) with a shirt and tie on and Um, no smart trousers on underneath because you can wear shorts, jeans or whatever (laughs) when you're on Zoom. Um, But you would have had to have gone to a Kingdom Hall and dressed smartly and you would have had to have knocked on doors, gone in the ministry, placed some magazines. Otherwise, you simply do not qualify for baptism. Those are two of the most basic requirements. You also have to ask, uh, uh, you know, answer questions and various things but those are the two basic things within this jehovah's witness religion you have to knock on doors you have to go to congregation kingdom hall meetings or auditorium meetings okay so now you don't have to why because it's the pandemic so what's the point i'm making well the point i'm making is isn't it interesting how rules when it suits watchtower can be changed very easily and when it doesn't suit watchtower even those those rules on other topics could be changed very very easily they don't choose to change them for example the way that they deal with judicial committees should be definitely changed i haven't got a problem with disfellowshipping but shunning should be abandoned okay so what do i mean by that well disfellowshipping carries with it the penalty of shunning i think it should be possible to disfellowship somebody and indeed it should be possible for people to choose to disassociate without the penalty of shunning but because it carries with it that penalty that blackmail if you will that's what makes it bad it's not the disfellowshipping or the disassociation in of as in of itself that's bad what's bad what we're saying is bad is the shunning there's a difference there and so we're seeing that as well with judicials and the way that they're handled and the questions Uh, We're seeing that with the cover up of abuse on an industrial scale within the organisation. There's so many things that need to be reformed that the organisation could reform without costing the organisation money, really. I mean, what would it cost the organisation? Maybe a maximum of a few hundred dollars to reform these things because perhaps maybe they have to reprint some letters or, or, you know, I don't know. It's not going to cost them a huge amount of money. Uh, monetary terms is pretty much policies that could be changed for free and we know they could easily be changed 
because we know when it suits Watchtower, they change their mind on all sorts of things. Completely different religion, really. Now, all of a sudden, you don't go to a Kingdom Hall and you don't knock on doors. You sit in your home on Zoom or sit in your home and do a letter writing campaign. And that's your ministry and your meetings. No vehicle fuel expended <laughs> you and, and time spent traveling. You just sit at home and be a Jehovah's Witness. You go out to work, perhaps, if you work, don't work from home. But you sit at home the, to do your Jehovah's Witness stuff, to do your studying, obviously, to do your ministry and to do your meetings. Yes, they're trialing a hybrid meetings um idea in in some countries because obviously they want to get back to using their auditoriums and kingdom halls but isn't it interesting when it suits them they can change their mind and say oh you don't need to do it this way now you can do it this way they can completely revamp the religion so to speak it's now an online slash hybrid religion i don't think it will ever get back to being purely 100 percent kingdom hall based i think we are going to get over the pandemic but i think it's changed the watchtower for good sorry not for good, but it's changed the watchtower uh, for the foreseeable future. But I don't think, yeah, we're, we're certainly going to have a post-pandemic world. I'm, I'm pretty confident. Some scientists reckon it will be the year 2024, which seems quite a long time in the future. But roll on 2024, if that's the case. Um, I know COVID-19 is never going away, as a lot of diseases are never going to go away, really, are they? When you think about it, there's still Ebola on earth it's just not an epidemic anymore there's still hiv it's just not an epidemic anymore and there will still be covid it just won't be a pandemic anymore but um there will be an end to the covid19 pandemic but i don't think watchtower are going back to the way they were i don't think they could actually i think people quite like going to their meetings via zoom and for some particularly in the pimo category and I happen to know this, at least in some congregations in Essex, which I happen to know as a fact, and one or two congregations I happen to know in Norfolk that I know personally, maybe, and that's two counties in the UK, in case you're wondering about Norfolk and Essex, and, you know, c counties in um, in England, in, in the British Isles. So maybe... This is the case elsewhere as well, but I know for a fact this is happening. People are doing their Jehovah's Witness Zoom meetings without their camera turned on, so the brothers can't see them and can't see into the living room. Well, that's wonderful because then they don't even have to dress up as the king uh, uh, for, for for the for the meeting. Sorry, king hall. They don't even have to dress up for the meeting at all. Not even the top half, <laughs> and they don't even have to sit in front of their computer. They could just put it on mute once they log on and then carry on watching EastEnders. Do you know what I mean? So, and people do. We know for a fact that people who are PIMO do this. That means a woke Jehovah's Witness who no longer believes, but remains a Jehovah's Witness so that they can continue with family relationships. Because we know that the family is under threat by this cult, which is what makes it a cult. You know, oh, we're not a cult. Okay, do you shun people then? Well, yes. Okay, then you're a cult. You can't have it both ways. Dictionary definition, okay? Dictionary definition, you're a high control group. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, they insist they're not a cult, but yet on paper, you know, do the maths. They're a cult, okay? Um, and so, but it, isn't that interesting? I just thought that was a little thought that I should share because it plopped into my head and I thought it's worth talking about. That this is a religion that can dramatically change almost not quite but almost overnight it, they did actually take quite a long time to decide if i remember rightly back in 2020 they were still going knocking on the doors weeks into the pandemic they were really slow and yet the nfl was shutting down games you know the very next day with the american football and all sorts of things and yet they were still going door to door in the united states um, so they were very slow to react really however uh, my hat is off to them for finally reacting, but doesn't it go to show, does, isn't that interesting, that they can very quickly and easily change the entire way the religion is practised, change the way you worship God, basically. Oh, you don't need to do door-to-door -door ministry. Yeah, but I thought you said for years we had to, because 
Jesus' disciples went door to door, blah, blah, blah. Paul said go from house to house. Actually, he didn't, but that's the <laughs> that's for another video. If you've ever read Raymond Franz's Crisis of Conscience or In Search of Christian Freedom, the two books Raymond Franz wrote, he makes it abundantly clear that the New Testament doesn't preach going door to door. And people say, oh, well, maybe Raymond Franz didn't like the ministry. Actually, when Raymond Franz was a governing body member, he did enjoy the ministry. He did enjoy, he was a governing body member, and he did actually enjoy going door to door. That wasn't the reason. <laughs> the reason he says it is because the Bible doesn't teach door to door ministry. What's And this is the topic for another video, but spoiler alert, what Paul was saying was he was speaking to a congregation and saying, and from house to house, meaning when I go to your houses, like doing a shepherding visit kind of thing. That's what Paul was saying. So I, I ministered to you, I ministered to you both publicly and when I went to your houses, it says in one Bible translation. Well, that's not house to house or street to street or door to door. <laughs> so so the whole premise Watchtower has of the way that they have traditionally tried to fairly unsuccessfully, but tried to get converts, because as we know, a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses being baptized are baptized because they're born into the religion, not because they had someone knock on their door. Although I do know Jehovah's Witnesses who came in because they had somebody knock on their door, of course. But it's very unsuccessful when you think of the hundreds of millions of hours they used to spend knocking on doors prior to the end of 2019. Hundreds of millions of hours knocking on doors every single year. And yet, what were they achieving? You see, I have done window cleaning and I've knocked on people's doors. It's I call it canvassing. And one in 10 people I speak to become window cleaner, become uh, one of my customers. One in 10. On, that's my average. On a good day, it's one in five people that I knock on the doors. They want me as their window cleaner. So, and yet when I went knocked on doors as a Jehovah's Witness, probably one door in a hundred who were at home, I'm talking about people who are at home, not, not at homes, probably one in a hundred would actually take the magazines. <laughs> and... Overall, I had two Bible studies the entire time I was a Jehovah's Witness, over 30 years. Well, that's rubbish when you think about the hours I was spending and I didn't convert a single person, which I'm pleased about. I did help subsequently. I helped people leave in my local congregation uh, once I left, but I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't convert anybody um, when I was in. I had Bible studies, but I didn't ever convert anyone. So I was pleased about that overall. But uh, but isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting that canvassing on paper works if it's a service people want? For example, when I knocked on doors in the past, which I have done, I got customers because it's something that they wanted. I was simply putting a service before an audience that were already hungry for that service. People are not hungry to be Jehovah's Witnesses, <laughs> which is why it doesn't work when you when you knock on doors. And now they're saying, oh, this letter writing campaign is amazing because when they write letters, we're now able to reach people that were at home all those years and not at home. Sorry, they, they call them not at homes. In other words, people that don't come to the door when you knock on their doors out in the ministry or maybe they genuinely are at work. And um, and so I thought that point was very interesting. Um, so Watchtower are obviously patting themselves on the back about their idea of a letter writing campaign to get letters out to everybody. I've even received a letter <laughs> because from my local congregation because they didn't realise where I lived, um, which was funny. Uh, sorry, my phone just keeps going off. They didn't realise where I lived, this couple who were in my former congregation, and they wrote me a letter. Um, just addressing it to dear neighbour and I thought well you're not my neighbour you don't even live in the same town <laughs> you live in the same congregation but not the same town very funny anyway so yeah um, yeah I received a letter I did read the letter it, it, it the letter doesn't exist anymore I, I, I'm afraid to, to say I ripped it up um, but uh, but I did read the letter and I actually have a recording of me reading the letter. So I might put that on YouTube at some point. But um, but yeah, the letter no longer exists. But as I say, I, I do. I did record myself reading it 
um, because there's some interesting points in there. But that's maybe for another video. I might not use it. Who knows? Um, but anyway, thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this little interesting uh, snippet of what goes on in my head sometimes. <laughs> okay. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, thank you for listening to my podcast.